Welcome to Facebook for the Blind, your look at the downfall of Western civilization through the best memes we can find each week. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that, welcome to the time we like to celebrate Facebook for the Blind, a show for the visually and Facebook impaired. Today is Monday, September 13th, 2021 in most of America, while in Texas it is 1984. <laughs> spent the entire weekend being told to never forget but it was very interesting all of the things that they wanted us to forget like a whole lot of things like i noticed i didn't hear the word pakistan i didn't hear isi i didn't hear the winner of the afghan war was pakistan i didn't hear that very much um, another fun fact, oh, well, I did actually hear it. There was a guy by the name of Bruce Rydell. He's a former CIA agent. And he said this week, uh, uh, in a conference recently that was recorded that he was in the white house on September 14th when, uh, George W. Bush contacted Tony Blair and on the phone three days after September 11th, he said, oh yeah, we're going to invade Iraq too. That's something wow. that they didn't. They didn't tell mm-hmm. us to remember? Yeah. Another fun fact I didn't hear uh, in the news at all over the last three days of a bunch of jingoist, fear-mongering BS was that uh, most of those people who flew those planes weren't from Afghanistan. They were from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, yeah. Didn't hear that a whole lot. Oh, absolutely. Also revealed this week, uh, America's... Yeah, no, uh, that was, yeah. An analysis of America's failure in its response to COVID was the siloing of information competitively between the FDA and the CDC. And I I just couldn't help but thinking that maybe a national health crisis could use a national health care program, you know, to do like national health strategies to address like national health problems with with like national health information. Anyway, ah, whew, ah, okay, and uh, all right, so I keep being told that uh, I need to do more more upbeat, uh, positive news, so I'm going <laughs> to... You're gonna, nailing it. <laughs> I, I know, I know. Dude, I've been working on it. I, I have been working on it, and I think I'm getting really good at it now, so... Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go in with some stuff here. Uh, school board meetings were pretty crazy. That's something that's happened here. And uh, by the way, I, I mean, have you guys been seeing in the news all the school school board meetings with people going nuts? And I just want to point out uh, uh, to to you know George and Michael that uh, I want you to see this in a different way. This is potential stage time. Stage time. That's what I'm saying. Stage oh. time. Yeah. Five minutes. Anyway, the comedians never really examined that uh, avenue of venues. You can just go to city council meetings. Yeah. And just do a set until they stop you. Yes. Like, you yeah. know. I mean, you, who, could, ev- you could do like a high level troll, like Andy Kaufman type shit, like at a city council. And it would be on video and there would be a record of it that you could get. Yeah. And dude, there are all these idiots all lined up there. The jokes write themselves. They come to the meetings too. You can just describe them. But anyway, I just wanted to point that out. Uh, That's a great idea. Yeah. I love I the block from the city hall, man. I could totally do that. Mm-hmm. In other news, uh, one of the glaring failures of the vaccine waiver that they have not waived uh, the uh, the patents for production because, you know, 97% of the world is not America and uh, we could, you know, get rid of those patents and give the vaccine to everybody. Uh, why not? Uh, here's a weird one that I stumbled across. <laughs> there was an NFT that sold for $225 million, which normally would have been a huge news story, but in COVID weird NFT times, that's just thursday uh israel has decided that the best way to deal with the palestinians is a new bunch of robots that's right killer robots coming to a disputed border near you jesus in some positive news Lil porgies is open again and i have it on good authority from michael matthews it tastes the same and the lines are not too bad meanwhile down in florida i shared this one with jason brown because i think it's hilarious that you're from this state man the Speaker of the Florida House just put a QAnon activist in charge of redistricting. Hi there, Cord Bird. You nutcase. Hey, if you're having a bad day, here's a smiling alpaca. Aww, I, I didn't realize thank this. Thank you. Yeah. That is really cute. 
This is a good one. This works 365 days a year. Probably going to go ahead and slap this into uh, the Facebook for the Blind group because, uh, you know, honestly, I, I need it. I need it. <laughs> it's like if you're having a bad day. <laughs> The last 460 days in a row, <laughs> I needed a picture of a smiling alpaca. That's not uh, that many. Eh. <laughs> Come on. All right, how about this one? This is a picture of an alligator, and somebody's scratching him on the back of the head, and he's, like, raising his neck all up. And it says, when it's later, and you finally see your alligator. And the alligator's saying, oh, you. That's a pretty good alligator voice. I hesitated to bring up this story, but uh, the uh, largest statue that once stood at a height of six stories tall of General E. Lee uh, was taken down, and uh, we're looking at a picture here of him being hoisted, which I think just looks funny. And uh, I happened to watch this video of this, and the crowd that showed up at this point started going, na, 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 hey, and the guys... On the cranes joined in. They started swinging along with it. It was quite beautiful. Now I would like you to contrast that with my final story. I always try to close on an animal story upbeat because these guys tell me I need to do that. Uh, the Ig Nobel Awards came out. These are the uh, counter to the uh, Nobel mm -hmm. Prize. And the Ig Nobel Award this year went to study that hung rhinos upside down from a helicopter. Wins Woo! the Ig Nobel Prize 2021. Contrast, awesome. contrast how that looks with this, though. I mean, come on. I mean, they're both funny. They're both funny. They're both very, <laughs> very funny. And there we go. And those are the news headlines for September 13th, or Monday the 13th, as I'm going to be describing it from now on, 2021. I am joined Yay. by my lovely co-hosts, Michael Labune and George Cruikshank, and uh, I believe George, you are up next and got some memes for us. Michael's up there. We go. Michael's up next. Memes, right? Oh, Michael's up next. Michael is up. Battling next. it out. <laughs> All right, me, so, Michael, George. <laughs> so, um, the Onion's reporting. You missed this one, Eric, but the Onion reported that Americans fondly recall 9/11 as the last time nation could unite in bloodlust. Nice. And yep. I gotta say, man, so every, true. All, all, every time somebody said like, "Well, we really came together in 9/11," like, yeah, Islamophobia, uh, yeah, is what we came together around. <laughs> uh, at Jaron Myers says we're also emotionally damaged from this last year and a half. That Steve from Blues Clues was like, "I have to address the nation." Oh! <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Steve from Blues. Clues Clues made me cry this week. Uh, at Boozy Aww. Badger says, Steve, Steve from Blues Clues. Remember how we used to search for clues together with our handy dandy notebook? Me, no, me knowing damn well I was almost an adult when that show started, Eric. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 this yeah. is a four, pa four panels of the video that Steve from Blues Clues uh, released this week. Just encouraging people and kind of giving people closure. It was nice. Shared by at laboratory underscore notes. And he's the first panel. He says, "And you could have it all, my empire of dirt. I will let you down. I will make you hurt." <laughs> <laughs> Something about the kindness of his face. <laughs> so weird. This one is uh, two panels. The first panel is Steve from Blues Clues. The the second panel is the mugshot of Pee Wee Herman. And he says, "Y'all got Steve from Blues Clues coming back with childhood closure." I got Pee Wee Herman in a porn theater. We are not the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. This is a picture from Glow Fuck Yourself. And uh, it's, I don't know what this girl was attempting. I think it's like a teenage girl in a yellow shirt. I think maybe she was trying to do a front flip out of a swing, but she is parallel to the ground, face down, flying through the air, and it just says fucking narcolepsy. <laughs> <laughs> a picture of fred rogers and next to him is a quote from yeah, him that says, yeah. if they send one of yours to the hospital you send six of theirs to the morgue <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh boy um Ooh. this is a, a picture of a of a frog with like a real juicy booty and human a human <laughs> ass and legs uh just sort of a dream 
dreamy blue kind of color behind and it says we are all cursed with the burden of existence against our will now slap my slimy butt <laughs> <laughs> this is more for andrew who's not here ah. <laughs> yeah mason meninga who is uh he's great guy he lives here in minneapolis um on Twitter, he says, I've never agreed more with a Baptist church. And, and the, it's a picture of a sign at Mount Olive Baptist, Baptist Church that says, a four-inch tongue can bring a six-foot man to his knees. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, Baptist I, calling it out. <laughs> I think this is a picture of like a man circumcising himself. It looks like a really old painting. Uh, and there's an angel like pointing at this man as he has holds a blade to his <laughs> exposed penis, and it says, "When well, you're just sitting there trying to whittle on your dong, and she's got to micromanage the whole project." <laughs> 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 this one made me think of George. Uh, at Sip for uh -huh. says the CIA says none of the other kids in their class got report uh -huh. cards either. And they're sharing a New York Times article that says CIA says it has found no link between itself and crack trade. <laughs> yeah. uh, Classic. I've shared that Classic. one several times. That's a great, great headline. Yep. I, I got to commend the New York Times on that one. That is a great headline. <laughs> <laughs> it's from like yeah. 1997, man. Uh -huh. uh, at Kyle Plant Emoji says me at a certain point in a relationship you get to a point where you've seen your partner's butthole more than they have themselves Ooh. and i think there's something beautiful in that priest the bride has also chosen to write her own vows <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> that, that's all i got for round one. Oh my god mm -hmm. that's awesome all right i'm up i'm up with memes, here we go. This is another Steve one. We'll go with that. That's Steve saying, and then look at you. And look at all of you have done. All you have accomplished. And that's a photo of George from Seinfeld drinking a beer with chips on his shirt. <laughs> 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 pretty, pretty accurate. Pretty relatable. Uh, watch out, parents. Millennials have begun hiding their student loan debt in Halloween candy this year. <laughs> <laughs> nice gotta watch out for that um this one's from the simpsons it's got uh uh abe simpson the old old grandpa saying well back in my day you'd have a chain from your wallet connected to your belt which i thought looked fucking badass at the time <laughs> 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 This I still think advanced, it looks badass, man. <laughs> this is an advanced meme, and it's one that really requires explanation for this show. So on the top is uh, uh, Owen Wilson twice, and then uh, Fozzie Bear from the Muppets, and then Owen Wilson twice again, and then three Fozzie Bears, and then underneath that's two Owen Wilsons and one Fozzie Bear and two Owen Wilsons. And it's based on, like, the catchphrases that Owen Wilson is associated with his, like, wow. I'm like wow and then it's uh fozzy bears waka waka so it goes wow wow waka wow wow waka, 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 wow and then the bottom is that Bella rocha from rage against the machine doing the yeah <laughs> perfect so that's both on parade <laughs> nice um oh. this one is a classic but it came across my uh my timeline again and i love it uh this one is a pair of booty shorts and the top <laughs> frame says, you don't like marvel movies and the bottom the booty shorts say you got something against conventionally attractive white people quipping in between poorly filmed fight scenes and three hour blocks of pro-us propaganda <laughs> <laughs> nice and, uh yeah not a not a huge fan. <laughs> I don't I, if if you like Marvel movies, I don't I don't judge. I just I'm yeah, not for me. Anyway, <laughs> dude, I'm watching Agents of Shield. I cannot cop attitude to anybody. <laughs> All right, 
This is a tweet from at sensational underscore Dre. Uh, it says, so a person with a felony can't vote, but they're still counted on the census. And if they manage to find a job, they still have to pay taxes. Didn't someone make a big fuss about taxation without representation one time or am I tripping? And then underneath is some Tumblr commentary. It says almost like this was done to, on purpose to keep uh, certain groups of people from voting. Uh, underneath is another Tumblr from Chaos Afro. Uh, when black people say that racism is systemic, this is what we mean by being over police. We are in constant danger of being disenfranchised. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that one got pretty good engagement today. Super hilarious. I know if it's the format of the show, but, uh, you know, you got to drop that in sometimes. Uh, here's one from, it's a tweet from at not uh, Solus. That's S-Z-R-O-L-U-S. And uh, says, Bait, what's wrong? You barely touched your dinner. Did I overcook your burger? And uh, it's a burger. It's a Big Mac, except the buns are all denim. Uh, <laughs> there's a button on that. That one was kind of for Andrew as well. <laughs> he's not here to revel in the way through weird shit this one is uh from yesterday uh this one says uh aaron Rodgers looks like the new guy at work asking if you have any extra smokes and the photo <laughs> uh uh <laughs> but... he does really? and i've been that guy so i know <laughs> Oh, oh, this uh, this is uh, I'm going to end this round with this. I didn't see any like other Twitter verification of this. I've only I've only seen this photo and it's absolutely insane. And I need to try and verify this because it's just beyond. It's a Navy flag, American flag and McDonald's flag still at half staff on 912 here at Gitmo. Yeah. Uh, not familiar with Gitmo. That's Guantanamo Bay. Oh my god! West I'm Cuba. I am. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I am at a loss. I am at a loss for that. All right, jumping into a whole bunch of meme stuff in no particular order because I suck. All right, check it out. This one got quite a bit of traffic on my page. It is the uh, irritated cat behind the salad. It says, "Have you ever looked at someone and thought, shut the hell up, and they weren't even speaking?" And I tell you what, man, about 80 of my friends engaged with that and were like, yeah, yeah, all the time. Um, I uh, follow Where did 80 uh, of your friends have someone that they can think of that they want to shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. <laughs> I, uh, I follow a lot of uh, academics and uh, this one was just pure gold. Love this quite a bit. Uh, this English teacher has on her door. Uh, it says welcome, but then there's a big red, you know, circle and a, and a line through it. Stop sign. And it's and written in what appears to be blood on the door. It says, wash your hands like you made your husband kill the king and you can't get the blood off. Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> out, damn spot, out. Anyway, a little Shakespeare reference there. And uh, again... Uh, Facebook people, huge Shakespeare fans. I, I, who knew? Um, this next one also, uh, also a sign on a door in academia world. It's uh, Hugo Reinert posts: the new office neighbor has a very sensible office door policy. Dear visitor, in order to protect my concentration and sanity, I have decided to implement a door policy. Door open, very welcome to knock and come in. Yes, I would love to have a chat. Door closed. Please do not knock at my door or come in unless you have urgent business with little asterisks. I'm extremely easily distracted and I will talk to you to the end of time instead of writing my dissertation. And never come in without knocking. The uh, asterisk says, list of things that are urgent business. The building or someone is on fire. You're bringing me coffee. Revolution or there is a dog. <laughs> Dude, and Michael, Dean, and Cordelia oh, sent this to each other. <laughs> uh, this is a play on the old, uh, you know, SpongeBob getting out of the chair. I'm going to leave. And it says, when the world is changing and it's making you scared. And SpongeBob has sunglasses, a red MAGA hat, and a beard. And it says, I, 
I'm gonna head out and make a video in my truck. <laughs> no shit. That was <laughs> mostly for George. <laughs> uh, this is a this is a two panel top and bottom couple talking, and the man says, "Do you have any children?" And the woman says, "Yes, I have one that's just under two. And he says, "I know how many one is." <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love this format, dude. I, I've seen these memes all over. They're so stupid. So bad. So very, very bad. This next one is uh, from our friend uh, friend of the show, Andrew Titi. Uh, and he's got uh, Baby Yoda here. Uh, Gru, 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 whatever his name is. Uh, it says, uh, if you keep your AC any higher than 75, please don't invite me to your terrarium, you lizard. <laughs> and Titi has yeah, commented. Good. I want cold enough to hang meat in my house. <laughs> why would you see if can... you were, why would you run AC at seventy eight? Like that's what's the point? Right. Yeah, exactly. What are you doing? Unless yeah. it's connected to a dehumidifier or something. I mean it'll be well, yeah, most AC is, but yeah, yeah. if it's like the out, yeah. <laughs> anyway, the angry Yoda. I can't believe there aren't more memes like this. It's pretty good. This next one is a classic Calvin Hobbes standing over a snowman who is on the ground. And Calvin is saying, his name is Robert Paulson. (laughs) (laughs) I loved. Hadn't seen that one before. Uh, This next one is a six panel of a slug. It says, this is Arnold the slug. He is always smiling. And Arnold is smiling. You'll never catch him crying still smiling that's because if he cries the salt in his tears would melt his face just like his wife and son two melted slugs look at him smiling (laughs) he's still smiling (laughs) (laughs) you just see he's just got a little bit of a quiver in one eye on one eye (laughs) and a big smile that fucked that's a lot of dynamic tension for six panels that's what i'm saying this next one is uh epstein and it says hey guys guess what it was on this date two years ago that i didn't kill myself remember that damn was that two years ago i know when i time fuck flies when you're just locked down (laughs) yeah Yeah. (laughs) also from two years ago i particularly like this little meme here uh, this is from a horn book for switches who says it's funny that there are currently two real actual separate documented child sex trafficking conspiracies with tendrils up to the highest levels of power Epstein and ice but people decided to invent a third fake one to get mad at instead yeah <laughs> oh shit, oh, shit. pizza uh, gate and QAnon and all that stuff people love that and, and by the way, too, I had way more stuff for the whole never forget stuff. Because uh, remember that, uh, you know, a subdivision of Lockheed Martin that had six people in George W. Bush's ex- administration, six Lockheed Martin executives, they had a subsidiary called DynCorp, and they got caught with a child sex trafficking ring uh, running, running a child sex trafficking ring in Afghan, which uh, many witnesses said was specifically for cocaine stoned cops just horribleness that was corporate and uh you know but yeah get mad at uh, pizzagate or you know whatever q tells you to do does anybody right. know what's happening with just lane maxwell right now you know i don't know she hasn't killed herself yet or we would have heard about it i mean she's gonna she hasn't but been suicided but no. she hasn't been suicided yet yeah, yeah. Hey, let's get back into children's characters. Check it out. It's Oscar the Grouch and Comrade Gritty. And they are reading a book together. And it says, Not our problem, scoffed the landlord, employer, and policeman. The poor will no longer stand being crushed between low wages and high cost of living, and we will drag the lifeless bodies of the oppressors through the streets, cheering, Is it your problem now? replied the children. Fucking Sesame Street needs Gritty. Fuck yeah. I know, man. I, I was really impressed. Notice he's reading the book, The Adventures of Anti-Fash Gordon. <laughs> That's awesome. That was a really nice touch. Uh, this next one, I we don't normally do video clips, but uh, it's it's got to be done. It's got to be done because have you all seen this little girl, this adorable, adorable little girl? Uh, yeah. I got to, I got to, you know, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop this and then restart it because you, you have to see this. Uh, so... So this is uh, posted by uh, f- 
Francine Sorota Newman, and uh, just 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 a little girl in in the back seat. Okay. Mom said fuck. No, I didn't. Mom said fuck every day. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I don't. Yes, I did. You don't repeat that. Don't say that, okay? You mean fuck, you mean fuck. Don't say that. Okay, you don't say it either, you hear me? But don't fuck, okay? <laughs> 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 Busted. <Hey. laughs> that was the best piece of video I saw on Facebook. <laughs> it's adorable. Yeah. Yo, you just like fucking lodging a complaint to your parents while you're in a car seat and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy's got to You say fuck every day. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm, I'm kicking off round two. Uh, this is a picture of, uh, well, let me just start. It says me checking the price on avocados. Please don't be high. Avocados. And it's just a picture of Snoop Dogg high as fuck. High as fuck. <laughs> I like that he is always <laughs> so visibly high. Good one. Uh, this is shared from my good friend Steve Gerard, who just moved to New York City from Chicago. I uh, stand up comedian. And he's standing. Uh, he says, cannot believe the Chicago comedy scene surprised me with a visit in New York City. And it's just him standing around a bunch of trash. <laughs> 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 he is, he's been doing the same joke, like, in, in different ways for, <laughs> for like, 10 fucking years. Uh, this says me, stands up really fast, my entire body, and it's just every warning light that could ever possibly go off <laughs> in your car. Check engine, mm. battery, oil, fuel. Wow, guys. Uh, this one's kind of sweet. This is Mike Kaplan, uh, comedian, New York City comedian. There's things to remember. One, you exist. Two, you matter. Three, others exist. Four, others matter. Five, maybe nothing is real. Six, act like it is just in case, though. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Mike Kaplan actually pretty pretty accurately captured uh, my metaphysical beliefs here. Um, this is a lot of Sesame Street tonight. This is six pictures of Cookie Monster. <laughs> Uh, in different poses, different settings. One's at a museum, one's in front of the fucking Sphinx. One, he's a chef, one, he's wearing a necktie. The first one says, your stomach thinks all potatoes are mashed. The second one says, lasagna is just spaghetti-flavored cake. The <laughs> third one, <laughs> onion rings are vegetable donuts. <laughs> <laughs> this one's my favorite. It's weird that we cook bacon and bake cookies. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> you would think you would cook cookies or bake bacon, but no. Nope. Uh, lobsters are mermaids to scorpions, and <laughs> cookie dough is the sushi of dessert. Huh. Cookie dough, your cookie monster dropping some fucking wisdom. Uh, this is a picture of the aunt from The Simpsons, one of the aunts. She's smoking a cigarette, her back's turned, she's sitting on a car in the night sky behind her, in front of her, and it says, I did not shake my ass enough this summer, wow. Man, Delta's got us all feeling like that. <laughs> yep. Dumb bitch juice has a, has a picture of a woman praying and it says, <coughs> please, ancestors, I need your guidance. And the next picture is some sort of like lizard, eel, fish looking thing. And it just says flopping noises. <laughs> and Rachel says, too far back. And the next person says, I think I would like to hear him out. <laughs> because <laughs> evolution all right uh chance willie nashville comedian says christian metalcore bands watching minors beat the shit out of each other in a mosh pit like yeah that's god's plan <laughs> <laughs> uh this is obviously from a show but i don't know what the show is it's just a picture of a woman looking at a man that i think they're sitting at a piano maybe and uh she's saying i'm by because the bible says adam and eve not adam or eve <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was this is four panels and it starts with a picture of a tree and it kind of explains it as it goes on it says this tree was cut down and then it's a picture without the tree to make space for a billboard and now a picture of the billboard of a kid hugging a tree and then the final panel is just somebody calling Thanos on their cell phone <laughs> 
<laughs> if George watched Marvel movies, he'd get it. Uh, this <laughs> is a picture of uh, one of those like stickers people put in the back of their cars, and this is just this has to win the worst fucking theology this week. And it says, if Jesus had a gun, he would be alive today. Oh my god! <laughs> but there's like so much wrong with that, right? Like the whole point of the Christian story is that Jesus is alive. He was resurrected. I don't know. Um, so, but, this is just, yeah, also, <laughs> but also the idea also that like, if Jesus had a gun, what he would have killed the Romans. So he wouldn't have died for your sins. So your religion. Yeah. Would, so like, <laughs> there's not, yeah, there's, there's no. just no way to make heads no. and tails. It's, no. it's fucking bullshit. Uh, my final one, though, and I, I, I do stand by this one. Uh, it says, don't claim to be a fan of Christian rock if you don't know who this artist is. And it's a picture of David Koresh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn! I think that was holy fuck. That's yeah. amazing. That's funny. That, is that a- might be my favorite meme this week, dude. I, I laughed at it all fucking week. Fucking ah. and on Jesus. Wow, that's so <laughs> funny. Holy shit. Killing uh, me. There, this one is uh this is the future the left wants, and it's people riding on tanks of capybaras. Uh, <laughs> 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 but recently actually uh there has been uh, in Argentina, like the richest neighborhoods have started to be uh, uh, overrun with capybaras because uh, the wetlands are being diminished. So mm. they're going back into their old uh, uh, spots and uh, mm. uh, people are pretty upset at it. And poor people in uh, Argentina are fucking stoked about it. And capybaras have kind of become a symbol of, uh, you know, uh, uprising against the rich uh, just happening just even in nature. Uh, here's one. It's uh, from at Pano Parker on Twitter. Uh, it's the most dystopian image of the year award goes to the new Amazon building in Mexico and is a giant yeah. uh, Amazon warehouse uh, beyond the size, you know, just like a, a incredibly ridiculously sized warehouse uh, next to just a um, shanty town. A straight up shanty um, where squalor. probably assuming the workers uh live Whoa. and uh there's a there's a shot at the bottom where it's got the amazon logo with their disgusting smile uh arrow uh right above the um the shanties and uh and yeah that's uh that's pretty dystopian i would uh I'd, I'd give that number one but you know what I'm just going to, you know, lighten the mood a little bit. Here's Chuck E. Cheese, the old school Chuck E. Cheese, telling you jacking off is fun and cool. <laughs> God is fake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Kind of thing Chuck E. Cheese would do. He he seems like he likes to party. Um, yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh... I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> Jason Brown real quick. Jason Brown in the comments says, Oh, you're from Waco. Name three songs. <laughs> <laughs> Here's, one... <laughs> Here's one based on um, what uh, you posted, uh, uh, Mike, about uh, the onion doing their, uh, article just nation hasn't shared bloodlust the onions uh 9 11 track record has been incredible since october 24th 2001 uh pledge children of millionaires square off on world stage Ooh, wow. president bush made final preparations monday for a full-scale u.s ground assault against osama bin laden the privileged formerly hard partying heir to a family fortune and uh, yeah, privileged children of millionaire yep. are off on world stage. Yep. Uh, yeah. That's all it's ever been. That's all war is. We die for them. Yeah. Goddamn right. <laughs> uh, I was talking with my kid yesterday, and she's like, 
she's like, I was telling her she's not allowed to ever be in the military because we're Christian anarchists. And she goes, I don't want to be in the military. She goes, as soon as somebody was like, there's a war, I'd be like, let's just skip to the peace treaty. That's where it's going to go anyway. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, baby. They'll immediately say, like, not enough poor people have died yet. Yeah, oh. She goes, oh, dad. She's like, daddy. And I was like, hey, listen, <laughs> you're my kid. You got to know the truth. Yeah. <laughs> the Dead kind of have a great song about this uh, called Kinky Sex Makes the World Go Round. Well, calling it a song is kind of a stretch, but, you know, yeah. Anyway, uh, this is uh, from uh, Balaji uh, Srinivasan, uh, B-A-L-A-J-I-S. Uh, it says, the purge begins. Everything is legal for 24 hours. I immediately build a duplex in an area zoned for single-family dwellings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people... People always talk about, like, the purge is so fucking cynical as to, like, how humans would act in any situation, like, where there weren't laws. Like, mm-hmm. if you talk to real anarchists or if you look at real situations like that, there's a lot more of people helping each other than horrific fucking murders. Like, oh, it's the purge. Going to kill everybody. <laughs> it's just like, no, nah, I'm going to I'm gonna fucking do some shit. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to uh, not depreciate my property taxes correctly. <laughs> this, one, this one's super fun. It's from at Overmayor. Um, the, the subtweet is BNO News. Um, I'm not familiar with BNO. If they've got a rep, let me know um, because I, I like to vet my sources usually, but this just blew my mind today. Uh, it's a breaking u.s threatens to prosecute icc judges and sanction their funds if it opens an investigation into alleged u.s war crimes in afghanistan and i'm just seeing now this happened in 2018 and the commentary from Overmayor is when you definitely did not commit war crimes (laughs) that's uh fucking hey these judges you know you're a judge for the international criminal court uh you look into us we're gonna we're gonna fucking uh, arrest you we're gonna prosecute you to the full extent of the law because that's what you gotta do i'm gonna end on my postus with the mostus it's uh it's not even a meme it's straight up this one got the most engagement this is a photo of me out Aww. At, uh uh breakfast on the porch and chelsea is just having breakfast coffee on the porch this morning and it was super nice. Aww. So nice. Do you ever hold a cigarette between your toes? Like if you need your hands <laughs> for something else? Not oh, not often. I've done it to read the paper before. It's true. I have. Hilarious. But uh, that would be wild. Because usually I don't need to hold that much while I'm sitting down. <laughs> if I need my, if I'm walking, I need my toes. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard. To, it's hard to smoke with your toes and walk. You have to learn to walk on your hands to do that. Actually, yeah, I want to get back into the never forget. Another thing that I forgot that I I didn't want to ever forget is uh, hey, remember that choice when the United States announced that they wanted Osama bin Laden and the government of Afghanistan uh, said they were quite happy and willing to provide him uh, so long as he was judged in a court of law, and the U.S. were like not. Nah, happy about the idea of going to the icc in the hague at all and they were like mm-hmm. Fuck no man we're getting a war on so yeah so in a more wholesome in a more wholesome uh thing this is a this is a frame from an abc after school special which used to run on tv at 3 p.m and this one's entitled the day my kid went punk and it's nice. it's Corey haim uh who is a, a teen actor back in the day <laughs> Uh, in a sleeveless plaid button-down collar shirt, an, an interesting choice for a punk. Uh, he has some kind of wristband on and this, like, gelled-up faux hawk. He has no piercings, no tattoos, nothing. <laughs> it's just, and then the he look. Just has, he just has hair gel in. <laughs> it's just gel. It's like, you know, you know all, all he's lost is his sleeves at this point. <laughs> <laughs> you can wash it all off in like no time at all. And uh, I was so curious. And you see the dad's disdain to, oh, oh he's a punk. Look at this dippity doo in his hair. Uh, a much better uh, thing. 
showed up on the ABC After School magazine, which was called Scholastic Scope. I never uh, realized that, but uh, they've got a picture here of Corey Haim, very clean cut in, in a little in a little insert picture, and then just wearing some eyeliner, some mauve lipstick. He's just really like punk is not that punk back back in the eighties. It's kind of he's playing the violin. Playing, yeah, well, that's, I was with that. Man, yeah. violins are punk as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of teens, uh, Vape Shop Johnson posted, ah, the mighty innovations of capitalism. And it's a sign outside of McDonald's saying, now hiring 14 and 15 year olds. So that's, that's good stuff. That's just from August 26th, two weeks ago. That's right. So if you've got a 14 year old, you're looking to pimp out Mickey D's has your opportunity. Jesus. Yeah. Now, why would you want to do that? Probably to pay your landlord. A lot of landlord jokes going around. Inside Edition posted, if American horror films reflect our collective fears, what monsters will this generation see emerge? And trending is landlords. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, not the first nightmare about landlords going on even this week, I'm sure. Uh, Steve Lawson, my buddy, reminds me that uh, Get Your War On was the definitive comic strip of the 9-11 era. You guys remember Get Your War On? That's a fucking no. back, man. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And uh, so we see here all in red, some office clip art, and it's a white guy in a tie calling on the phone to his buddy saying, oh, yeah, Operation Enduring Freedom is in the house. And his black friend on a computer says, oh, yeah, Operation Enduring Our Freedom is in the motherfucking house. And white guy said, yeah, Operation Enduring Our Freedom to bomb the living fuck out of you is in the house. <laughs> it's exactly yeah. what, what it was that? like. That was David Rees, right? R E S. Man, I really don't know, but get your war I've on. I've heard of this. Oh my god, dude! Google get your war on. Holy crap! It's all just clip art, but it's delightful. It's very yep. well put together. Uh, I just Wikipedia is David Rees. After that, I remember hearing about a project of his where he did artisanal pencil sharpening. Where you could send oh, a pencil weird. to him, he would sharpen it artisanally for a hundred dollars. Wow. <laughs> I wonder how much for pictures of his feet. <laughs> All right. right. Was, dude, you just reminded me. There was this picture of this guy, and he was like, damn, didn't know 23 would hit this hard. And it's just like a regular looking dude sitting at his bed, but he blurred out he blurred out his feet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fucking Twitter, man. Dude, man, you can't flood the market, man. You got to hold back so you can charge big money for that. You know, supply and demand. All right, moving on. Got memes here. Hey, do you remember before the internet that it was thought that the cause of collective ignorance was the lack of access to information? Well, it wasn't that. <laughs> that was just spot on. Yeah, that all right. We ruled that out. Yeah. Back to the landlords. Uh, the exchange I'm currently having with my landlord from Patrick T. Shep. Uh, the hot water is broken. How? Says the landlord. Can you send me some photos? <laughs> and the guy's got in the next one a picture of water coming out of the faucet. He says, it looks like this, but it's not hot. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I've I've had these conversations. That's so stupid. But yeah, all around, all around, yeah. So you know, uh, the point next... of, like, taking the tent is to do the job of fixing the thing, right? Like that's the whole reason you get this money every month. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Landlord jokes are hot this this week. They've been really coming up fast. Uh, also, exciting is that uh, Texas has become the new Florida. Uh, saw this one a lot. It's a pink background with a hanger, but it's kind of in the shape of Texas. There's a Texas in this hanger. Wire yeah. hanger. I got quite a bit of traction off of this post. I just said, how do we all feel about Texas? <laughs> Um, because, uh, you know, and I didn't even, I didn't even know at the time, but apparently there is a big move to do, you know, Texas, uh, you know, doing their, uh, what do you call it? Secession. 
And it was like, I mean, you hear about it from time to time, but man, this thread went on for a long time. And I'll tell you what, the rest of America was just like, yeah, fuck them. Go ahead. Just leave. Go ahead and leave. And then, uh, you know, later on, I proposed. I was like, all right, all right, all right. But you know what's going to happen? They're going to break up, and it's going to be just like Brexit. Bunch of suckers getting pulled into this stuff. And then later, like, regretting it. And you know what happens after a breakup? They got to buy us something really nice. So, uh, This is uh, from friend of the show, comedian Ben Banach. Mr. Rogan, send a message to the state of Texas. Carry these horse worms to term. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, Will Wheaton, Will Wheaton Amazing. passed this one on. If your God thinks that a 13 year old girl should have to carry her incestuous, rapist baby to term, then fuck your God and fuck you for worshiping them. And uh, I got to tell you what, man, this thing had like, I don't know, 19,000 comments on it, and I did not read them because it is not my first day on the internet. Patton Oswald also chimed in here in response to the Family Research Council, one of my favorite outfits. Family Research Council posted, the Bible is ardently and unequivocally pro-life. And Mr. Oswald says, yeah, except for all those times God kills people and does that flood thing that kills almost everyone on the planet. Kill Bill is more pro-life than the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Three uh, actual scripture... Hang on, there's an actual scripture in the Bible that says, Blessed are those who bash your baby's heads against the stone. Oh, yeah. Like, infanticide is, you know. That's anyway. it. That's in the beatitudes, the different beatings. <laughs> Blessed is beating the poor. <laughs> Blessed is beating the baby seals. I love the beatitudes. Those are good. <laughs> All right. Beatitudes is so fucking dumb, Eric. <laughs> Yeah, if there wasn't a, if there wasn't a couple people who'd gone to divinity school in here, I wouldn't bother with that kind of joke. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, speaking of which, uh, three panel from I believe Mean Girls. Who cares? The girls are talking to each other, and the blonde girl says we should make churches pay taxes. And the response is no, it's separation of church and state. You can't tax them. She's like, so you agree? Religion shouldn't be involved in government, which means your excuse for being pro life is bullshit. So there was that. Uh, no, this yeah, one, that too. this one, I would just like to point out as hope, especially for uh, Quiet and Jax. Uh, this is from a man, Kurt Sabin, who uh, was the biggest Jesus freak in my high school. He was the one who wore a different tie dye that said Jesus every day, and he is six and a half feet tall, so you could not help but see that every day going down the hall big smile super positive bottled sunshine guy ended up being a, a missionary in japan but you know that doesn't pay big money so he also worked for samsung and worked on fukushima he's got that much god power he was like bring it i'll handle it he reposted this if you're going to be pro-life be pro-life all the way and the comment is uh from um a quote from Dave Barnhart, traditional Christian pastor, who says, quote, The unborn are a convenient group of people to advocate for. They never make demands of you. They are morally uncomplicated, unlike the incarcerated, the addicted, or the chronically poor. They don't resent your condescension or complain that you are not politically correct. Unlike widows, they don't ask you to question patriarchy. Unlike orphans, they don't need money, education, child care. Unlike aliens, they don't bring all that racial, cultural, religious baggage that you dislike. They allow you to feel good about yourself without any work at creating or maintaining relationships. And when they're born, you can forget about them because they cease to be unborn. It's almost as if by being born, they have died to you. You can love the unborn and advocate for them without substantially challenging your own wealth, power, or privilege, without reimagining social structures, apologizing, or making reparations to anyone. They are, in short, the perfect people to love if you want to claim you love Jesus, but actually dislike people who breathe. Nice. Yeah. Prisoners, immigrants, the sick, the poor, widows, orphans, all the groups that are specifically mentioned in the Bible, they all get thrown under the bus for the unborn. Yep. And it's, it's because missionary friends of mine... Like this, like Kurt, pass this around. I have the tiniest, teeniest, itsiest, bitsiest smidgen of hope. So he's, this one, oh, I, like that. I, People I, like, it, like, no. like that actually like 
spread like what fucking Jesus said in the Bible. <laughs> like fucking love everybody what the fuck are you talking about with all this bullshit yeah I, dude i don't yeah i'm a librarian i'm a librarian we love the people who read the books read the book <laughs> here's the thing eric um the the thing about this that is really like most poignant is that what you just read is spot fucking on right i mean it's actually really 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 in line with um with the gospels, this, I, I don't know who Dave Barnhart is, but, um, what but he's talking like about him. there is, is an understanding of Jesus that would have made sense to the, like, to Jesus's original audience. Even yeah. it's also really, really in line with like current Jewish teaching, which mm-hmm. makes sense because Jesus definitely a Jew. So the thing that's fucking weird about this is that none of these people, who are super pro punishment when it comes to abortion. None of the evangelical, like right wing fundamentalist fucking fascists, none of them give a fuck about any of this at all. They don't care that they're wrong about scripture. They don't care that they're, that their teaching is out of line with like, with sacred tradition. They don't give a fuck because what they give a fuck about is power and like they're getting their power. And when they stand up with their pro-life fucking signs, they're grandstanding for power. So I, I, we need more of this, absolutely. And we need to wrest the word Christian away from these fucking assholes. But, like, unfortunately, they no longer even pretend to follow Jesus. They just worship him. Dude, Do you I... go to Joel Osteen's church and flip all the tables over? Yes! Fuck, Road trip! Fuck Joel Osteen, dude. Yes. Let's get arrested. That's actually, by the way, George, I tried to organize something like that when i was in divinity school and i found out that that's a that's a, actually a that's a small terrorism uh it's a, fe- it's, it's a federal crime and you go to prison for terrorism if you if you do things at churches wow yeah it sucks because there's this awful guy in i forget his name greg something he's just north of nashville no. and he's like really really fucking evil and if we just go in there and flip over all their tables yeah, yeah. If if they if you do it in an organized way with any kind of political agenda, not you just go in there like you're you know <laughs> on one. Like okay, if we do PCP first, we will probably be fine. We'll just go to regular jail. Get on us, dude. What if we did the PCP <laughs> in a satanic ritual where it was one of our sacraments? Would we have religious freedom to invade another church? You already know the answer to that. <laughs> no, I don't. I want to call Emma. <laughs> yeah, let me. Let me explain this to you. Religious freedom is only for white Christians. Okay, <laughs> we can we can go on. All right, I got five more uh, memes, and then I am handing it back over to you, Michael. Uh, this was posted by a friend of the show, Rena Calm, comedian who is in Texas, and she has pointed out uh, the Texas Longhorns logo, and it is overlaid on women's anatomy, and it exactly lines up with endometrium, fallopian tube, ovary, uterus, cervix, vagina, and vulva. And she says, are we not even going to discuss this irony? <laughs> and I like it. Hashtag women's rights. Mm-hmm. Hashtag women rights are human rights. Hashtag my body, my choice. So, yeah, a lot of Texas stuff. And uh, this one, I, I like to point out Caitlin Johnstone. <laughs> Caitlin Johnstone is a very weird uh, uh, Australian uh, uh, anti-authoritarian conspiracy theorist, and I'd love it. She says, no, Texas conservatives aren't like the Taliban. No, U.S. government authoritarianism isn't like China or North Korea. Know what it's like? America. It says so much that the most corrupt and destructive nation on earth keeps comparing its homegrown depravity to foreign nations. And her tag at the bottom is Germans and Nazi Germany. OMG, you guys are turning into China. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why? Exactly. Thought it was nice. She, she, hit, she lands some good ones every once in a while. Hey, remember about a year ago when the Texas boaters decided to have that boat rally down in Austin and the big yachts, like, we're going all fast and swamping the small yachts, and it was just such a clear symbol of what was actually happening? This uh, this meme went around with one of the boats getting swamped by these six-foot waves with all these Trump flags all over it, and uh, the tagline is, I, I guess they should have boated by mail. That's what we're he wasn't big enough to withstand the weight. I'm like, 
<laughs> Down at the bottom, somebody's done a great Trumpism here. Oh, I like boaters that don't sink. <laughs> yeah. Nice McCain tag there. All right. Amanda Duberman says, has anybody tried unplugging Texas and plugging it back in? Yeah. Craig, Ga Craig Gallagher replies, they did that last winter, and all they got was a message saying, Ted Cruz Cancun.exe is not responding. Yeah. <laughs> and final round, slamming on Texas becoming Florida. Uh, Sunday girl posts, the single star on Texas's flag is actually a review. That yep. was. Yes. <laughs> Clearly. All right. Here I go. Kicking off round three. Oh my god. I think. Oh, I... this is what this is what happens when we start the show at fucking eight forty-five. Uh, uh, this is a picture of a lemon woman. Uh, wow. Oh. And she's holding a leash. She has a lemon for a head, and. Uh, Kneeling next to her is a lime woman who has a gag in her mouth. And yeah, means... uh, the leash is attached to the gag. And it just says sub lime next to it. And if you're wondering if I got this off a of Scott page, the answer is, of course, I got this off a of Scott page. Mm -hmm. uh, this says me laying in bed, can't sleep, whips out phone, fires up porn and starts rubbing one out. Everyone monitoring monitoring my sleep study, and it's a picture of Kermit. <laughs> uh, this is something that uh, you know. I, I am a Christian minister, but I always stand uh, my Satanist humanist. Uh, Courtney Hurd says Satanists don't believe in a literal Satan. Army veteran says, then what do you call people who believe in a literal Satan? And the Church of Satan says Christians. Oh, <laughs> which is. Accurate. Exactly accurate. It's exactly accurate. Yeah. At Hans Malman, Molly Goodfellow says, girls don't like boys. Girls like those bowls that aren't quite bowls, but aren't quite plates that are really good for pasta. What? <laughs> yeah. It's true. Uh, <laughs> this is our, our good friend, Jason M. Dawkins. He cracked me up this week on Insta. He, he's posted a picture of a New York Times article that says ai can now write its own computer code that's good news for humans and jason says did ai also write this headline <laughs> <laughs> awesome glow glow fuck yourself says sex isn't even real they made it up to sell maid costumes and cow bikinis <laughs> <laughs> and that one's eric shared already uh, at gj mcclintock Posts a picture of Joel Osteen, two fingers pointed to the sky, and he says, I saw somebody say that Joel Osteen looks like Martin Short pretending to be Tim Allen, and I can't unsee it now. It's the <laughs> most accurate statement ever uttered. <laughs> I truly posted this, yes. <laughs> and my mom laugh reacted it, and I've never been so proud of getting a laugh react in my Aww. life. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. It's really true. He, that's I mean, That's exactly awesome. what Joel Osteen looks like. <laughs> and Martin Short, he uh, got all the parts of the meat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is uh, from Dumb Bitch Juice, and they're sharing coked up space cadet who says, not once did the Bible say not to do a line of cocaine. <laughs> 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 I'm almost through. This is just a picture of two possums on a fence, and it says, normalize being hot and nauseous at the same time. <laughs> or no, I'm sorry. Normalize being hot and nauseous all the time. This yep. is from at 69 Possum Street 20. Um, I I looked on their page. It's weird. It's just pictures of possums with nonsensical things, but I had a good huh. time. Uh, this is great. This is from at Deconstruction Girl, who I think is my mutual on Twitter, who says, why people leave the evangelical church, and it's a pie chart, and there's a little sliver of green, a little sliver of purple, and then a huge portion of orange and the green stands for terrible art and music the purple is researched church history and this is why people leave the evangelical church and the vast majority is orange because they heard the phrase daddy god one too many times um, <laughs> for those of you who didn't grow up evangelical i have some really bad news for you this is normal this is something people 
actually say, and they mean it, and they say it unironically. And mm-hmm. it is, look, if that's your theology, I'm not, you know, whatever. I'm glad you feel close to your creator, but it sounds so creepy to everyone else. Uh, and this is my last meme before my post with the most. Uh, and it is a picture of Dr. Phil, who's wearing a black T-shirt, and in all big white letters, it says, who ate all the pussy? <laughs> <laughs> this picture makes me so uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm, un- I'm uncomfortable, so too. <laughs> wow. Fun. All right, Eric, bring it home. Oh, I'm the one to. Oh, I'm sorry, man, I suck. You're it, man. Hey, what can I say? All right, this first one is a. Uh, it's a card, playing card. Sort of looks like an RPG card, uh, like a power or something you lay down in magic, and it says, uh, "To amateur veterinarians who are treating themselves with ivermectin." This is from comedian Jackie Cashin, and the uh, power card is thoughts and prayers. Its uh, time frame is instant, and it says, "Target player gains zero life." <laughs> nice. I didn't even play games. So I thought that was funny. Uh, this is a weird, very nice image of a, a head a skull being held by a headless body. And it says, I don't know who needs to hear this, but unintelligible blood curdling screaming. <laughs> Might be a visual joke. I'm not sure. Uh, this one I was turned on to in this show. Andrew Shanklin recommended images that could be edited onto the cover of Das Kapital for a humorous effect. And uh, this one is a cop on a horse with a, a billy stick and a person in the street <laughs> in a polo coat. And, it, and the title is <laughs> Never Meet Your Heroes. <laughs> That's awesome. Dude, images that could be edited onto the cover of Capital for humorous effect is a great group. And I highly recommend it. Uh, this is a uh, two panel. And the first one is a picture of Superman. And the second is uh, from the boys. And it's Homelander. And Superman is labeled, How U.S. History is Taught. And Homelander is, What Actually Happened. Fucking right. And I don't know if anyone besides me and Michael gets that, but man, that is a tight joke. There's only seven words in there. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Todd S. Tarns, Todd Starnes, I don't know. I think he might be a conservative right winger. He says, Biden says even at Fox News has a mandatory vaccine policy. Is that true? That can't be true. Have Hannity and Tucker and the others gotten the vaccine? That just can't be true. And I know he's going for some kind of weird sarcasm, but uh, people ate him alive. Ate him alive on this uh, for trying to be sarcastic, uh, including uh, Pat Oswalt, who commented uh, by retweeting Will Geters with a million like laugh emojis with the, the tears coming out of it. And it says... I love seeing in real time the lower level conservative cranks learning the national TV level guys they follow and admire have been lying to them. (laughs) It's it's like, it is is kind of funny. It is kind of funny. Conservative tears. Yeah. So, uh, Honcho posts, you can't be my coworker and my friend on social media until I see you break the rules at the job. And I was like, Oh, that's, that's true. Actually. (laughs) Another one going around. (laughs) The other one going around is repurposed uh, John Mulaney, uh, and it uh, says, Coworker, can I add you on Facebook? Me. Not unless everybody gets real cool about a bunch of stuff really quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is hilarious. That's actually Mulaney's uh, 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 answer to uh, people say, when are you going to run for president? <laughs> Never. Uh, this next one is uh, the classic, I don't know what you call this, the classic eyes wide, three panel, and then closed eyes, and then and then eyes wide. And it says, me, shoots a basketball. Cobain, my friend. It's Kobe, not Cobain. Me, I'm pretty sure Kurt Cobain didn't miss his last shot. <laughs> Blink. Okay. Gin and Tacos posts... At this rate of regression by 2029, Americans will be butt-chugging pancake butter to cure COVID Hormarabi variant, and the president will be a gun with Bluetooth speakers that blare racial slurs. (laughs) First comment, the Speaker of the House will be a pair of truck nuts. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Easy to picture, huh? I like this next one. This is a costume. This is a girl in a really cool looking, um, I don't know, fancy dress. She's got some rope around her waist, sort of crossed around her neck. And uh, this is posted by the Witch of Avalon that says, Mom, I need a costume for a religious party at school. Say no more. And then you notice that the bottom of the dress is like hay and fire, like she's tied to a stake. It's a really impressive dress, I think. If I, if I needed if I needed to wear a dress, I'd probably wear this dress. Uh, this is a shot from uh, uh, some French French movie where they're all in, you know, like, you know, Louis XIV clothing. And it says, my friends and I, high on horse tranquilizer, looking down on people for taking horse dewormer. <laughs> <laughs> that was for George, uh, who's gone. <laughs> so that's an, uh, it's a picture of Jesus, white Jesus, and he says, Whenever I'm having a bad day, I like to remember all the homophobic Christians that have pictures of Caucasian Jesus. I actually have pictures of Da Vinci's boyfriend. Always improves my mood. You know, I, I like this. I, I saw this one, too. But I'm not sure I've ever seen this picture before. Uh, they, this is the famous one that they just discovered, and it's sold for like a bajillion dollars, and it's really tiny. So it, it, there are no recent prints of this, but it probably was the this was the original by Da Vinci. Um, yeah, it was bought for like bajillions of dollars, like forty fifty million dollar painting. Wow! But it yeah, just recently arrived. But people copied Caucasian Jesus off Da Vinci, you know, back in was it fifteen hundred? I want to say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, and then Urkel Rain. Yes, Purple Rain, but it's got Steve Urkel's face imposed on Prince. <laughs> And uh, my man Joe Lamandola, he he put the best caption on. He said, "Did I sing that?" Oh my God, that hurt my ears. Yeah. What do you want, man? That's... It was good. <laughs> there you go. So in an almost entirely religious section, and I could have done more. <laughs> yeah. All right. I just uh, I'm just sharing my post with the most, and then I'm done, man. All righty, yo. Post with the most. Oh. So this one didn't do well on Facebook, but it did well on another platform. It's uh, it's Sean Fucked or Foyked. I don't know how to say this fucking guy's name. Fucked. And he's standing he's standing next to Donald Trump, and they're both giving the thumbs up. And this is that <laughs> asshole who went around the country having praise and worship services during COVID, the fucking super spreader event. Um, he's big time, big time evangelical, who thinks that like when COVID first happened and you know people were asked to socially distance and not have you know groups more than 10 people and stuff really thought this was the government attacking the church i mean he's one of the biggest problems out there as far as like the mm. church i think i think posterity will look back on evangelicals and see that they kept this virus going forever so uh i posted this picture that he posted i just reposted a picture he posted and i said so and i tagged him I said, so happy for Sean Foyk, who finally got to meet his Lord and personal Savior. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> that guy he's been singing about all those fucking nice. years. Fucking piece of mm -hmm. shit. I can't stand it. And then I, I was really proud of my hashtag, too. My hashtag was uh, get fucked. But <sighs> spelled the way he spelled his name. <laughs> but nice. I'm trying to make it a thing. It's not catching on, but I hope it is. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I got so many choices. I'm not even sure what to even, what, I don't even know what to run with here because, man, uh, all right, I'm going to try and try and try and try and try and do my best. Oh my God, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm stammering. That's what I'm doing. I'm stammering. Oh my God. All right. Um, uh, I think probably my post with the most was this one. Uh, and it's just a picture of Vice President Kamala Harris. And she says, I'll repeat the question. Can you think of any laws that give the government power to make decisions about the male body? And uh, we got quite a bit of traction on this. I'm not even yeah, going to go into how dumb the conversation got. But uh, yeah, there was this. Also, this one got a whole lot. Uh, it'd be nice to pin down the precise reason that IQ scores are dropping before we're too stupid to figure it out. Uh, I think this one, oh, by the shit. end of the week, we got 74 comments there. I'm pretty sure we broke 90. Uh, worldwide, uh, IQ scores have been dropping, and they have adjusted for different 
things. This is done all over the world and it's been done for a hundred years. But every single aspect, every single word in here got called into question. And I was just like, you know, the amount of nuance and qualification that you would like me to pack into a 20 word meme <laughs> for amazing yeah. accuracy. Is there, I mean, people saying IQ isn't, isn't the best measure of intelligence. And I'm like, oh, really? What is a better measure of intelligence? And nobody had anything. They could all do little quips. They all knew that one little thing. They were like, oh, if you see somebody talk about IQ, you can whip out a real fast. IQ is not an accurate measure. But that's the extent of the thought. It's just a little triggered, you know, cliche. And then they got nothing to follow up with. And it's like, hey, do you realize what this means? Worldwide, IQs are dropping. Like, is that, have you missed that part? Well, you know, actually, IQ is, oh, I just think. Uh, this one uh, again. What's, what's, what's your claim here, though? What, I mean, what's your first of all? IQ is uh, like not an accurate measure of intelligence. Number one, but number sure. two, what's your point? Do you think? Do you think that there's like, sure, the so... only thing that that can possibly mean? It can't possibly mean that our brains are becoming less capable of absorbing information, of learning. It like that. That's not how evolution works, Eric. So it has to be what? It has to be that we are diverging from the measuring stick. Okay, I mean, let me, no, I'm let not, me start I'm over again. This argument. Let me start a little bit here. The first thing you're going to want to Google is the Flynn effect, which was the first objection that was brought up. Flynn found that there was a steady increase of IQ, and they actually had to adjust because it's all based around 100 being the average. So they had to take a weighted average, and they had to redo the entire thing. They have been studying IQ, and it's in multiple countries around the world for 100 years. Flynn found that the scores were rising, that human beings were getting smarter. But recently, longitudinal studies have discovered that over the last 40 years, IQ scores in the civilized nations over 100 years, last 40 years, have actually been plateauing, if not dropping. People are suspecting all kinds of things. Could it be that greater temperature decreases people's intelligence? Yes, it does. How about carbon dioxide levels? Yes, it does. How about pollutants? Yes, it does. How about a thousand other chemicals that we have pumped into the atmosphere and the environment in the last 40 years? Mm, probably, but nobody studied all that yet. But people got Eric, all... Your ability to use your ability to use a condescending tone is impeccable. But listen, here's what I'm trying to say. Oh! Guilt. What I'm trying to say is that you're like these people who say, like, God is real because the Bible says so, and I believe in the Bible because God tells me to. What I'm saying is divorce yourself from this measuring stick of okay. IQ scores. Sure. Like, and and th that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, you're telling me, oh, I have to believe that IQs are dropping because according to the IQ test, IQs are dropping. And that we've been studying IQ with the IQ test for the last 100 years. What I'm saying is that has fuck all to do with intelligence. Okay, well, A, uh, come up with a better measure of intelligence. B, Well, that's just look, it, Eric, is that, is that intelligence is culturally defined. So you're not going to have a measure of intelligence that spans different cultures. Do you, think, you? do you think that longitudinal testing and a 100-year data set from countries all around the world is of any value at all? It depends what they're studying. If, if, there's, if they're studying the effects of ghosts in homes, then no. So... You think, do you think that the value of this information is zero? I, I'm not claiming it's 100%. I'm saying that it's better than nothing. There are tests that are showing a trend, and it'd be a really good idea if some people with some high IQs or some other measure of intelligence You know what, could, Eric, like, honestly, honestly that part I don't disagree with. That part I actually don't disagree with. What I disagree with is you dismissing the idea that IQ is a bad measurement for intelligence. And the reason I'm against it is because it nope. has been used as a tool for white supremacy for fucking generations. Yep, and agreed. that's the reason that I'm against it. So, uh, so I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say like, I'm not trying to say that we should learn nothing from this. What I am trying to say is that the people who are making this argument have merit. Triggered is a word that should be used around mental illness and not for offended, but whatever. Sure. The, be that as it may, the fact of the matter is they didn't like the fact that you were defending IQ scores, and there's merit to that argument. And oh, also, no, there is there is a reason. I think there is a, a reason to take a step back and go: Are people changing around the world, and is, are we headed in the wrong direction? Sure. Yeah. Next week, I'm gonna do how sperm counts are dropping. You want to lodge your objections now? Is this sperm count not a good way to measure? <laughs> sperm count's a great measurement of sperm count. <laughs> yeah.
I can assure you of that. <laughs> so, but we, I got to let you get your post with the most. And my kids tell me it's time for her to go to bed. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to do a couple more here. Uh, this is also, again, just a real quick one from the, the things that could be the cover of Capital. This is a post from CNBC, and it says, The economy's biggest mystery. Paychecks just aren't growing. And Wage Cox is just like, oh boy, it's a fucking mystery. Spooky, scary mystery. Better get fucking Sherlock Holmes on this one. It's a big fucking mystery with no <laughs> obvious answer. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and say this one was uh, my post with the most and say it's a picture of Jesus and it says, one man died for all. Who is this man? And someone has answered, Kenny Loggins. How does his death <laughs> help us? No more bad songs. <laughs> Why is it important we remember him? Highway to Danger Zone was okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, Eric. That was an episode <laughs> of Facebook for the Blind for February 13th, 2021. February. Did you say February 13th? September 13th. You did. He's got 1984. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. Love you, Eric. Love you, Drew. Love you, Michael. Bye, Michael. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> what a show Woo. what a show alright I'm stopping stop the recording thanks for listening to an episode of Facebook for the Blind follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram <laughs> <laughs> um